I am hunting for a creature that everyone can describe, but no one dares speak its name. I'm sure you've heard of it. I've really been enjoying this neon witch from Mercury Gios Lagan. You know, it has mechas in it, but it's not about mecha like all those mecha anime. Please, sir, madame, shade thereof. Where is this mecha anime that's about mecha? Where did you last see it? Which direction was it going? When asked this question, people often mistake it for a more common beast. Usually people say Gundam, which is short for saying, I have never watched Gundam. The Gundam Universal Century is about approximately 347 different things, and exactly zero of them are the Gundams themselves. The giant robots are entirely instrumental to the war stories or morality plays being acted out. Yes, occasionally the titular Gundam is passed around as a MacGuffin, a prize. But nobody feels the need to explain how the Maltese Falcon isn't really about the statuette, or how Dragon Ball isn't really about balls. Alternate century Gundams only slightly expand the choice of topics. It might be about girl bosses or MILFs, but never truly about the giant robots. There's only ever really lip service to the relative power of the machines themselves, especially after the original Mobile Suit Gundam, where it becomes about how all the pilots are space wizard god kings. The robots are merely a vehicle for the Japanese to spiritually return to the supposed glory days of infantry's primacy over mechanized warfare, or do a million rehashes on the Red Baron and Top Gun. Perhaps this commonly shared identity of war stories and fighter jock drama is more of what makes something identifiably a mecha anime than the presence of mecha themselves. Maybe the lack of these elements are what people are referring to when they say an anime containing mechas is not truly about mechas. But what's strange is that most of these shows, which supposedly aren't mecha anime, have all these elements in spades. Gurren Lagann or Evangelion are no less about the internal and interpersonal strain of piloting war machines than your typical Gundam or Macross is. Shinji is only slightly less willing to get in the robot than Amuro was. I think what's happening here becomes more obvious when you look at the equally difficult to find cousin of the mecha anime that's about mecha. The magical girl anime with no stakes or tension. I haven't watched many magical girl anime, it's not really my thing, but neither have most Madoka Magica fans. I see people talking about Madoka as if it's not expected for a magical girl show to, uh, have a plot. That every other Maho shoujo is just a cavalcade of tea parties and friendship forever. And the fact that the series features serious action and death makes it an entirely different animal. Here's a newsflash. One of the most popular anime in Japan is Precure. I've never really watched it, because if a grown man watches more than a single episode of Precure, he is automatically a pedophile. Them's the rules. But I have typed Precure Fighting into the search bar on Sakagaburu. If you've ever wondered why the new season of your favorite anime is looking kind of cheap, where all the resources went instead, the answer is that the entire anime industry just gets the dregs of the effort devoted to giving Precure ridiculously crispy fight scenes. When's the last time your favorite shonen series looked this good? This is some gourmet shit right here. It's not just surprising for a magical girl show, this is by its own right some of the most sick nasty action animation of all time, spread over years of series and movies. Now, of course, the reason people enjoy Madoka Magica and not other magical girl series isn't due to the action, but because it is, by direction and the inclusion of gore, directed towards an older audience. And the fact that it is a well-written series, expertly crafted by Studio Shaft, separates it from other efforts at adult magical girl franchises like Nanaha, even though they kill people in those shows too. But more than anyone would like to admit, people become invested in Madoka Magica more for the ways in which it is another magical girl show than the ways in which it is not. 
The themes are more calibrated to adult sensibilities, less forgiving than something like Sailor Moon. The scale of the violence and tragedy is greater. But Maduka Maguka is still fundamentally an anime about girls living double lives, coming of age, being heterosexual life partners, and ultimately saving the universe. This Maho Shoujo bread and butter ends up consuming far more of the series' runtime and energy than the twists. There's some play at deconstructing the common character archetypes, but ultimately the series is playing the concept of magical girls themselves pretty straight. Deeper darkness and a different target demographic does not change the fundamental genre of the work. People call anime deconstructions all the time, but media of any kind that can truly be called a deconstruction of a genre is rare. My benchmark for this is Watchmen. The series isn't a superhero story with more jokes or more gore, or about how bad it would be if some superheroes were evil. Alan Moore argues that the mere concept of superheroes is evil no matter how good-natured individual superheroes would be. The good guys lose in the end, and that's probably a good thing. Held to that standard, there are very few anime that can meaningfully be called deconstructions or subversions of an entire genre. Though if you are more measured with what you say, it's easy to find media that subverts certain concepts piecemeal, effectively so. Mob Psycho 100 disputes the notion that having fantastic superpowers will make you a popular, valuable, or even intimidating person. Girls' Last Tour subverts post-apocalyptic fiction in the acceptance of the fact that whatever cottagecore existence is to be found after the collapse of society, it will inevitably succumb to irreparable material scarcity. I'd argue that just a part of good storytelling is to diverge from the exact expectations applied to the genre in question, but that doesn't make it a top-to-bottom deconstruction. But here's what happens most of the time. People approach certain genres with widely accepted negative stereotypes and abysmally low standards. Mecha anime only appeals to nerds worried about the particulars of giant robots. Magical girl anime is just twee power of love stuff forever. Shonen anime is just an overlong opera of big muscle dudes charging up attacks and punching each other. Isekai series are all just template battle fantasy harems that take no aspect of their world building or characters seriously. All of these stereotypes have some basis in reality, but they don't reflect the shows that people actually like. The same way that many in the general public think of anime purely as poorly dressed dudes punching each other with underdressed schoolgirls as cheerleaders. Then, a well-made show comes along that has some kind of mimetic hook. Madhouse's One Punch Man is, for the most part, an exquisitely animated and scripted shonen action series. But it drew in a huge crowd of viewers with little familiarity with the genre because it disarms those stereotypical expectations with the light-hearted tone and the whole fights are over instantly framing. But you'll notice on closer inspection that the show breaks that conceit quickly and often. Later episodes consist of ages of melodrama working up to the climactic moment where Saitama ends a fight in a visually impressive fashion. Functionally no different from Goku powering up all episode. It's just that the execution is far more compelling and the payoff compressed. But the degree to which this is still in the spirit of shonen action anime is lost on viewers whose only exposure to the genre is other pop culture parody of its worst aspects. And now you have a whole audience of people who are insecure about the fact that they like this show at all. So since they enjoyed One Punch Man, it has to be a deconstruction of the shonen action genre, compared to the vague cultural memory of fairy tales, Shippuden, and Dragon Ball Z filler episodes. And then the next anime they enjoy, and the next, all get conscripted into this imaginary bubble of the unique, subversive anime which are the only good ones, no matter how tenuous that connection really is. And this doesn't just happen to brand new viewers. Every couple seasons, an anime comes out which is largely unremarkable and homogenized, but has just a seltzer water hint of heart or craft or novelty and a bunch of people who mostly subsist on these seasonal mass-produced isekai and harem series all hoist it on their shoulders and proclaim it to be the subversive masterpiece Augustus, since it so dramatically exceeds their standards of what an anime is supposed to be. 
then most of the time we see revealed preferences in action, as this show is promptly forgotten in a few years, because it's only so impressive when inside the small pond of the past couple seasons of TV anime releases. And you know, more power to the Anitubers and the R anime front page. It's not my place to deny people their comforting delusions regarding the depth and uniqueness of their favorite anime. But maybe stop being such a sundere about it. Be a little more positive regarding the things you like, as opposed to negative about the things you've never seen but are convinced you won't. If it's only the third anime you've ever watched, it's far more flattering to say, I liked Evangelion because I could relate to the characters and it looked super neat, than, I liked Evangelion because Shinji isn't happy-go-lucky to get in the robot like all those other mecha anime. Further, if the mere fact that an anime has a plot surprises you, if a story displaying just a little bit of effort and creativity subverts your expectations, maybe you need to raise your expectations. Go outside and expose yourself to some things that are universally considered to be good, like a Scorsese movie or sex. If people would just talk about the show they like and why it's good by its own merits, instead of dreaming up imaginary bad anime to compare it to, Maybe everyone could appreciate the art a little more, and understand each other a little better. Have a good one.